The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. I'm joined today by Jacob Ward, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. Ready to talk all things Stuart Downing. Yeah, should be good. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button uh, to stay up to date with all our videos, Rovers related. Right, so let me flash you back to about just over 24 hours ago, about midday, when the news almost out of nowhere came through that Rovers had secured a deal for Stuart Downing to the end of the season. What was your initial reaction to that news? I, I was very happy with it. I feel like right now we're in a bit of a crisis and you know we we lose it we've lost about what about ne nearly 10 of our first team players to injury or covid related issues right now and well not 10 first team players but 10 players in and around the first team and i feel like more right now i feel like Stuart Downing coming in with his versatility can play in a mul multiple positions across the pitch I feel like that's what we need. And so on to come in with that experience and give the boys a lift because I feel like we really do need that right now. And uh, I feel like if we hadn't have lost as many players as we had, we wouldn't have made this signing. And I think I think that is going through Mowbray's head in a way that obviously from now till the end of the season, the games are coming thick and fast. Pretty much every week we're playing twice a week. So injuries are going to be coming and going. And then obviously the COVID situation isn't getting any better. So to have a player who can play left wing, left back and centre mid, it's, it's, just, it's just a no-brainer at this point. And someone who arguably should have been player of the season last year, um, I, it's a great signing in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I'm not too sure I agree on the um, point being made about Mowbray, that he wouldn't have signed him without the injuries. I always felt that we were linked with Downing for so long that it seemed like it was inevitably always going to happen. I remember being linked with him like literally right after he'd left us. I thought it just made sense not to keep him. I thought after the season that he had, the impact that he had, it would have been a little bit silly to let him go, really. The, the, my only thinking in that was the fact it's took so long, that we, it's took this long for us to finally sign him. Because yeah. of, like, you, like you've mentioned, we've been linked with signing him again ever since he left. And the fact we've only just decided to do it now, that kind of makes me think, is it because of the injuries? Is it because we're, we're in such a poor run of form and for him to come in with his experience and give the boys a lift, is that something we need? To me, that's just the way I'm taking it because if, if it were a question of uh, he was always intending on signing him, I feel like he would have done it a month or two ago, in my opinion. Yeah, I see what you mean. Right, so let me throw you some stats from last season. So... He played 43 games last season in all competitions, scoring three and assisting eight. He, uh, According to TransferMarket.com, he played 18 games as a left midfielder, 13 games as centre mid and six games as a left back with a few other positions like attacking midfielder and right mid having one or two games. So based off them stats I've just told you and the fact that he's 36 years of age, what do you think made Tony Mowbray want Stuart Downing so much? Um, like I've already said, really. I mean, the the injury crisis right now, I feel like, you know, obviously we don't have Barry Douglas. We don't have Amari Bell right now. So the left-back position is vacant. I mean, in centre mid, we don't have... I'm not sure whether we'll have him back for the um, back for the game against Middlesbrough. Um, but Joe Rothwell's out. Dax obviously out for another month or so. Uh, Johnson's out with COVID. Who else is out from the midfield? Um, I think that's about it, isn't it? For the midfield wise, yeah. Yeah. We've got um, the three that are playing Buckley and Davenport, isn't it? Mm, at the moment. I mean, yeah. So considering how strong we are in that midfield, and we we lose, we we've obviously don't have three players right now, but aren't available and I, I, it shows because we've had to play three similar players all together, Evans, Holtby and 
tribal and it, it it's just not worked at all as it the past few games especially no. with making Corey Evans play in a more advanced midfield position where he's a he's a fish out of water it just doesn't suit him at all he he isn't creative he isn't offensive he should be playing where tribal's playing but obviously Morby thinks Tribal can do a better job in that defensive position than Evans, so he's forcing Evans to play there. Even though, from what I've saw from Tribal, Tribal can pick a pass better and everything, and I do think he probably would do better where Evans is currently playing, and I would have preferred it if they swapped, but obviously Morby's made that decision. But I feel like Downing in that midfield, as much as he probably is a bit similar to Holtby, and that he's not going to really drive with the ball. He's more going to pick the passes, put good balls into the box. I'd much rather have another Holtby style player in that midfield than having a defensive minded player such as an Evans, such as Davenport. And I would rather have Downing in that midfield right now over Buckley because Buckley played against, I think it's it was not Nottingham Forest, it were, Forest. yeah. Yeah, and he, he looked out of his depth. He looked out of his depth starting that game, and he was he was frustrating to watch the amount of misplaced passes, and he he was a bit of a passenger that game, and I'd much rather see Downing there, albeit despite me thinking Downing's worst performances last season came from midfield, but he was much better at left back and on the left wing. Um, I would I would much rather have him there right now. Um, I don't think we're going to see him play left wing this season because obviously we're playing a front three and I don't think he would work there. So it is going to be him playing midfield or potentially left back. But when Barry Douglas and Amari Bell are back from COVID, what won't be too long now. I doubt he's obviously going to get a look in at left back. So I, I can presume it's going to be, he's going to be coming in and out in the midfield position. Yeah. But it's just that um, the guarantee that you can have with him that no matter where you put him, whether that's left back, right wing, left wing, centre mid, as more of an attacking number 10, if we somehow change the system, it's that mm-hmm. guarantee that you can get with him, but you know he's going to put in a solid performance because I mean, he did it all across last season. And yeah, I mean, yeah. unless age has caught up with him, I mean, I, c- I couldn't imagine that changing. Well, sticking on that subject, actually, I think it's, he hasn't had a pre-season with the squad. Mm-hmm. He hasn't, Featured for Rovers since obviously the end of last season, so you can obviously with him being thirty six years of age, you can some maybe expect a bit of rustiness mm. uh, coming into his game. So, do you think that Stuart Downing can replicate what he did last season, this season for Rovers, and make a big impact? Um, I think he's not going to have as big of a role this season in the squad because. Our squad this season has a lot more depth. I think, as I've said, I think he's come in because of the crisis we're in right now to cover for the injuries and COVID-related issues we're currently having, but also come in to offer his experience and drag the lads up from where they are right now because obviously we're in such poor form, four losses out of five games. And I feel like, since we've lost Bennett, we've we've almost been screaming out for that a leader on the pitch to get us going, because it, it's just not happening right now. And I feel like Downing will offer that. Um, it's it's definitely not a bad thing to have in the dressing room. Um, in regards to his fitness, like you mentioned, he he hasn't had a preseason. He is a, he is one year older now. But from what I saw last season, where he played probably 90% of our games last season, maybe even more than that. Yeah, he only missed like four, I think he missed four games in the league. Four games. And I mean, yeah. he, he had the he had the League Cup game against Oldham, what you mentioned, what he scored in. So, you know, he, he played a hell of a lot of games for someone of his age and he didn't show it at all. No, he, he didn't. Not one bit. And I mean, obviously, in a lot of those games, he'll have been playing twice a week. He'll have been having a midweek game and then a weekend game. And he, he didn't show it. He, he never lost his pace by the looks of it from what we saw. Uh, at left back, left mid, he never got exposed. And no, I, I feel like obviously it'll take a week or two's time for him to get his fitness back up. I mean, um, we, we we obviously signed some players like Daniel Ayala who weren't, we weren't in training. 
and hasn't uh, he hadn't played a lot of games this season. He's obviously come into the squad, and he, he hasn't set the world alight, Daniel Ayar, by any means. But he he didn't he didn't look that bad, did he? He he weren't. He didn't look unfit. He didn't look not ready. He, he got a couple of weeks and then he was good to go. And I feel like that'll be a similar sort of thing with Stuart Downing. I know Stuart Downing's a bit older than Ayala, but I can see the same sort of thing happening. Maybe a week or two's time and then we'll start to see him. Yeah, I think that's the advantage of the international break coming up as well because we've got that in a couple of weeks, which will give him a good stretch of time to make sure he can build up his fitness ready. Mm. But in terms of his impact, I personally... Don't think he will have as big of an impact as he will last season. I think he'll play considerably less games. And I also think that because of the system that we play now, he can't play in what I thought was his best position, which was in the left-hand side of midfield. Mm. So maybe we'll kind of almost not play to his strengths, if you know what I mean. Because, I mean, if we can't put Stuart Downing on the left winger, really, can we? And we can't really put him at left back now either. We've just we've got better options. He were kind of almost forced for if you will last season just due, due to a lack of options and to his full credit he put in some great performances there but I think now I think it, I, I I think it's a good signing I loved him last season he was my player of the year by by quite a long distance to be honest I loved him throughout the whole thing but I think I agree with your point at centre mid I think he was kind of I don't know I kind of felt like he faded in and out of games quite a lot at centre mid he kind of not that he was a passenger, I don't think he was a passenger, but he he never seemed to get quite involved like he did on the left-hand side. And I feel like with the new system, that might hamper his ability to impact games as well as he did last season. So just to finish off, I'll give you one word to describe the signing. Needed. I, I definitely think he's needed right now. Just, I know... As soon as we get all our players back, and if we if, say from after the international break, we're going to have Dak back, Johnson back, Douglas and Bell, Ayala, Kaminsky. Obviously, we've got all these injuries and COVID players out with COVID. We're going to have them back. Does he make the 18 at that point? They, probably not. But there's no doubt in my mind we're going to have more players out with COVID till the end of the season. We're going to have more players get injured just because the fact we're playing two games a week every week at this point. And to have a player who can come in and play at left back, play at centre mid, like like you mentioned, he's not going to be playing up front on the left hand side because that is probably too much of an advanced role. And Brereton and Elliot up front are almost playing as like strikers in a way. They're, they're not playing as wingers where obviously we saw Stuart down in last season. They're more playing as strikers. I think that's obviously why Mowbray has the idea of putting Sam Gallagher there all the time, but we won't get into that. But no, I think I think for a player to come in and provide performances at centre mid and left back when needed, because there's no doubt in my mind we're probably going to lose Douglas or Bell again this season. And to have Downing potentially coming at left back where I thought he played best last season, um, I, I'd love to see him there. He, he never got beat for pace. He never got shored up defensively. Even though he is, he, he obviously he's never really played in that position for wherever he's been, and he never got shown up. And I thought he did a hell of a lot better than Bell did in that position. And Bell's played there his whole career. But I would like, like we we're saying, we'd, we'd much rather have a down in that midfield right now than a Corey Evans, just someone who's a bit more offensive, can pick a pass, doesn't look uncomfortable going forwards, and isn't going to always sideways, backwards pass and a bit more balanced in midfield. So no, like I said, I think it's a needed signing if I was to sum it up with one word. Yeah, I think the word I would probably go for is safe. I think mm. you know what you're going to get with Stuart Down and you're going to get a top professional, someone that can almost do everything that he's needed in that midfield to an extent. And it just made sense all around. I just I just personally wish it would have happened earlier because he would have been perfect mm. for games like Nottingham Forest instead of John Buckley. Games like Watford and then, you know, the ones that had Corey Evans in the midfield where he just Definitely. didn't click, did it? He never never really got working. Yeah. So anyway, that, to, to wrap yeah, things up, oh, have you got something? Go on. No, I was just going to say that. That's 
It's the one thing I can't understand why why he hasn't made this signing sooner, to be honest, because obviously he's on a free. I mean, I'm not sure what his wages are, but I would imagine they're probably anywhere around 10 to 15. And, you know, like like you've just mentioned, if, if he's in that midfield for the games we've been missing, Johnson and uh, Rothwell, I mean, like you've said, Watford, Notts Forest, the past two uh, the past two games, Reading, um, you know, a lot of our losses have come in those games, and I don't think that's I don't think that's a surprise to be honest. And the one game where we did win again in this bad run of form we've had, it was Johnson, Tribal, and Holtby. And again, I don't think that's a coincidence because obviously we we had Johnson driving from the midfield, and it it just worked that it it, it, it flawed and it there was balance again. And I, like you've said, it, it is annoying that we we haven't made this signing sooner. But I think. Like I've mentioned, I think maybe it's a panic sort of thing, but at least we've got him now and we shouldn't have this problem anymore, hopefully, and having to have a weekly rant about Corey Evans and why he's in that position. I bet you'll be looking forward to that, to be honest. It's all you bloody talk about at this point. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and drop a like if um, you enjoyed the video and uh, that'll be all. Thanks for watching. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.